wait to show you the uh, painting and engraving of the ornament. Show you the uh, the yoke fellow drill in action on site or even gifts for your family or even like, you know, if you have your Christmas tree up, tree up and then uh, like I know a lot of you guys are starting to book live events, you guys are working on site. So this is another thing that you could potentially offer to as a service on top of the niches that you already have. Okay. Hello everyone. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, today in the afternoon, wherever you are in the world. We appreciate that you're coming here. Um, hoping that you learned something new. Michelle and I have prepared this workshop for quite a long time. And um, we can't wait to show you the uh, painting and engraving of the ornament. <laughs> Michelle, do you want to introduce yeah. yourself? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm Michelle. I am a calligrapher engraver and bottle painter located in Hawaii. And I teach bottle painting as a niche service to calligraphers so that they can offer it to luxury brands and stand out. And I'm also the um, creator of the fundamentals of bottle painting. So, Talisa, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. So I am a calligrapher and artist um, from Toronto, Canada. So I do calligraphy, engraving, and also illustration. Um, I also teach hand engraving for a calligrapher. So for anyone who is a, already know how to do calligraphy and wanted to upgrade their skills into doing something like um, into engraving, I teach um, pretty much that and how to you know market yourself and the business of engraving all at once. Uh, but we will be talking about our courses much later. Um, so yeah, we're excited to uh, teach this um workshop yes um, yeah it's so coming in at a good time it's december um mm -hmm. a lot of things have been happening um mm -hmm. lisa i know that you have been recommending something to all of us yes so um, <laughs> the reason why we wanted to do this um workshop is one where we wanted to show you the uh the yoke fellow drill in action okay. um, you've probably seen that a lot on Instagram. Some people have already started using the uh, the yoke fill, or we call it the yoki. <laughs> um, so you're gonna be seeing that in action, and um, as well as you know, I guess yeah, holidays um, ideas for on site or even gifts mm -hmm. for your family, or even like you know, if you have your Christmas tree up, tree up and then you can create this ornament. And um, yeah. And it's and then, it's a lot. Like I know a lot of you guys are starting to book live events. You guys are working on site. So this is another thing that you could potentially offer to as a service on top of the niches that you already have. So most of us here are calligraphers, engravers, bottle painting fits right into all of this. But of course, we're not painting a bottle today. We're still painting on glass. <laughs> Which is basically, you know, the same. Same surface. Yeah. Yeah, same fundamentals, right? Because I know that yeah. there's a lot of events that are doing ornaments as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a uh, one way to um, offer, like Michelle said. So, yeah. um, so uh, the workshop is actually we actually did pre-record it. Um, we're being transparent. <laughs> um, the reason being is uh, one, I we don't really want to hurt your ears listening to the engraving because when we do that, like you probably won't be able to hear me. And then um, for some reason, the microphone um, is a lot sensitive when they, when, uh, you know, they get the, uh, the engraving sound than the actual in person, even mm -hmm. though it's pretty, it's a, it's a pretty quiet um, uh, drill. So we decided we just have to pre-record it. So you will see that some of it are fast forward, like in uh, twice of the speed. The reason being is just, it's just too slow. But we are actually recording the um, workshop. So you are going to be getting the replay um, about two hours um, after this workshop. So what we recommend is that you want to watch it first, um, even if you have all the engraving, um, all the uh, tools ready with you. Just watch it first. So, and then you, you can, I mean, if you want to follow along, you could. Um, it's probably straightforward once you see it. Um, the handout has been sent out. It is a Canva template. So it's something that you download. When you click on it, it will take you to 
the side of Canva and it's it's free to use. So um, and then um, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much. Did we? Did I miss anything? I don't think I did. Yeah, you got everything. So with with the Canva, you can like um, update your last name on it, and you'll see us doing that in the video. Um, also, I wanted to mention that with the video, we do go a little faster in there because there are some areas that we sped up like two times the speed. So when you do rewatch it, you can always like um, pause it. Yeah, pause it and then keep going. So it makes it easier. We, we just want you guys to like enjoy it right now. And um, Talisa and I will be hanging out in the chat group. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll be in there like waiting for your answer questions. Yeah, so I'm gonna turn off my video so we can see. Okay. And Okay, let's get work shopping. All right. <laughs> now, the link that we provided will take you to the Canva template, which will look like this. So you want to click on use template and you can create a Canva account for free. Now, if you have a Canva application, you can also open it there or you can just have it open on your web browser. Okay, now the first thing that you're gonna do is um, you wanna click on the family name and you can change the family name to yours. And I have the family etiquette here where you can follow the rules. Um, so it's really click, once you click on it, you can change it. And if you want to resize, you can do that as well. It's very, very simple. now that you've done updating your family name you're going to click on the share bu button which is on the top right corner once you click the share then you're going to click download and then you're going to change the file type to pdf print because we're going to print this so once you click that and you click download again and then it's going to be saved on your computer So now that you have the uh, paper printed, um, you will need a glass um, ornament. Um, this is uh, actually pretty big. Um, so this is in um, this is in three and a half inch. Now um, glass ornament comes in different sizes. Um, so this is the smallest one that. Um, uh, that a smallest ornament could fit, but it can still work with a bigger size like this. Um, so, um, what you first need to do is to basically center um, the circle that we designed earlier for you. Um, that says this is us and your family name and the year. Um, so what I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically trace the words. And um, in order to trace that, um, there are several drafting tools that you can use. You can either use the, um, the Stabilo All pencil because it is glass. Um, so there is no way that it will scratch. Um, this type of glass is perfectly fine. Um, or sometimes, or you can use an archival ink. Um, I do like to use this Micron uh, plastic nib. Um, it says PN over here. You can also use a, um, a water base extra fine point. This is by Artistro. If you want something that's more um, semi-permanent, not permanent, um, so it doesn't smudge when you write. And sometimes I honestly use my Tombow. Um, but um, if you are using this, so you know you don't have to worry that it's going to scratch. But I'm actually going to be using the uh, Micron pen because this is what I like to use the most. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna draft the uh, the design on top of the glass.
so it's a nice day. It's gonna come over. I could do it here, but I'm honestly gonna do it here because there's so much space. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take this thing off just to see if I want to redo anything um, from the design. I think that seems pretty okay. I do want to redo this part though, so yeah. <laughs> but I'll have to do that on top of the uh, thing. So I'm going to, if you haven't made mistakes, um, you can just do this, right? And um, you don't have to do it exactly like that. Basically, I wanted to make sure that the flourishing makes sense, so I had to turn the ornament a little bit, so then it's easier for me to flourish that S. Okay. Oops, no, so I have to dot the eye. So, this is what we're going to be engraving next. Now that you have your draft um, on the ornament, we are ready to engrave. I am using the Yoke Fellow, as you know, this is my favorite. I'm using one millimeter Ram Diamond Burr. Um, and then we are going to be engraving on top of either a cushion or anything that's soft. So then the vibration will be absorbed. Um, the vibration from the glass will be absorbed by the cushion um, which is important so um, even though the drill is brushless um, it is better for er, for you ergonomically to engrave on a cushion um, yeah so and um because it is a glass i'm gonna go all the way up to um 40 this is i'm just showing this to you like this is kind of upside down right now but um so i'm gonna plan. And then now it's at 40, so it goes up, um, it takes about 3 seconds, it goes up, that 3 seconds you can just like, you know, put your, um, loop your burr, and then I'm gonna push this inside so you can see what I'm doing, and then we are, uh, gonna start engraving. Now because I am using, um, that, because I drafted, um, with a, um, with an easily wiped off pen, so you wanna go from down, to up so engrave from down here first and then you go up okay All right let's get right into it when i'm engraving block letters it is easier for me to turn the ornaments around because downward is much easier to engrave than going upwards so you see me turning the um, ornaments around quite often one recommendation that i have about engraving is that you should always commit to the line that you are engraving when you are doing a touch up Clean this up. I'm pausing it for now. And then just gonna get a cotton pad and then wipe it off. Uh, you probably can't see it now unless until it dries. Uh, still very, very wet. Oh, you can see it better. Okay, so now that we have uh, the uh, um, ornament engraved, I'm going to actually use silver to add the color. 
Okay, so we're gonna be using Rub and Love and Silver Leaf to add the color. You can choose a different color if you like, if you want gold. Um, but I'm actually using this one because I like the, uh, the, I like how it looks like silver on glass. Um, I'm just gonna put on top like so. So I'm not gonna be rubbing it with a cotton, uh, uh, a cotton butt. Uh, sorry, a cotton. Yeah, a cotton butt. I'll be actually using a cotton pad to rub it all off. And you just basically drag it down, drag it to everywhere that it needs the rub and buff. So then it'll be easier for your hand, and um, and you save a lot of time. Okay, and I think. We've pretty much cleaned up all the gilding wax. And then here it is. We are in grape ornament. And now Michelle is going to show you how to paint the ornament. I love Talisa's handwriting. So I traced it. I even changed it to the Clemens. And then we have the 2022 at the bottom. We're gonna paint the back side. So before we even get started, I can feel there's some residue on the back, probably like from my um, finger oils or maybe from some of the rub and buff. But um, just to ensure that the paint will stick better to it, um, we're gonna clean it off with some uh, rubbing alcohol. So I have my dispenser right here, um, filled it with any sort of rubbing alcohol. And then um, I also have my cotton pad. So it's really nice, you just pump a few squeezes on there and then you can just wipe it off. So you only have to do the back side. This is the only area that we're painting. All right, so now that we have it cleaned off, I am going to get the paper and we're gonna place it directly on top and I also have all the colors here so I did this to save some time uh, we have the red gold blue purple yellow green and orange these are the colors that we'll use to make this uh, light garland at the top so I have it squeezed out on my palette here um, your palette can be anything it can be a paper plate it can be a ceramic plate or a piece of paper just anything to hold your paints on so if you have your um, palette box, you can also use the paints from here too. Uh, mine have uh, definitely been very loved, as you can tell. Um, but this is actually a really great tool to save your paints from drying out. Um, you can use it there or you can do like what I did and just squeeze it out onto the palette. Next is I'm going to start tracing the design here. So I have my Daco brush. Uh, round 2-0 this is what I'll be using to create the light garland so with the gold I am going to start tracing the lines here if you don't have gold you can use brown or camel camel is the the light light tan color um, because the gold is so transparent you might need to go back over it if you want it to be a little bit more um, opaque. I kind of like mine to be a little bit thin. Now that we have the string on there, we can go ahead and wash your brush off. And then now what we're gonna do is to create the circles, um, we're gonna flip that same brush over and then we're gonna use the opposite side. This will give us like nice, perfect circles very quickly. So I'm gonna dip some into the red. I have just a little bit on the brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna start creating those little dots. So just dab it right down. Some of the circles aren't very nice, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I have 
about five dots there. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. And then I will start creating the next color. And I notice I need to put more paint on the brush when the dot starts getting smaller. So I'm just gonna wipe off the blue. And then my next color will be purple. I'm going to finish up making the circles. And lastly, I clean off my brush, switch to the orange paint, and finish up with the last few dots. Don't worry if yours is not completely following the guidelines. They're going to overlap. And then I'm going to flip it over to see how it looks. Oh, I actually really like that. I like how it came out. While it's drying, I'm gonna get the sealer ready. So the sealer that I have is this Deco Art Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. Um, the way that we're gonna put it on is with the cotton bud or the Q-tip. So what I like to do is just open up the top be really careful because this stuff is really thin. Um, and then I just kind of use the excess, whatever's inside the cap. There you go. And then we're gonna use this to like dab it onto the painting. So we can do that once it's dry. If I put it on now while it's wet, it's just gonna pick up the paint. So we do need to wait for it to dry a little bit. So we'll just wait a minute or so. And you can see here that we kind of globbed on the paint a little. See, I don't know if you can see that here. This is what it looks like up close. It has like a nice 3D look, but this globbiness right here, that will take a little longer to dry. Which is fine. but the gold paint that we put on is dry already. So I'm just kind of touching it to see. Yeah, that's, I see the blue, it's on my finger, so definitely not dry yet. Now that our painting is dry to touch, let's see, I, when you touch it, nothing is on my hand. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is seal it a little bit like that. And then we're just gonna dab it right over the painted areas. Just put a thin layer on it. This helps seal it in place. Makes it a little bit difficult for it to come off, which is good, it's what we want. And I have noticed this dries very fast. Maybe in a few minutes, it'll be dry to touch. And you can see it's really shiny. There you go, just dabbing all the areas, putting a very thin layer. And a little will go a long way. Like 
So it'll dry within a few minutes. This is what it looks like. Okay, this is it. <laughs> oh, I didn't put the ribbon, but <laughs> here you go. So cute. I wish you could see it better, but there you go. <laughs> I feel like this, we're doing like the, the makeup tutorial. I know, like, can this you is the shade that I'm using. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. It's it really is because you can see like the painting in the background. It's yeah. like three D almost. Yeah. It's like oh, <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Um, and then we just have like some other questions that, that I'll just answer here. Tammy asks if we use a high gloss or matte. Um, I use the gloss because you're painting on a glass surface. You want it to be glossy. Just cover the areas that is painted. You don't have to do the whole backside um, because then it'll just make it look like a little bit too glossy and you don't need to do that. And it also takes up more time if you do it that way. So just cover your painted areas. Yeah. Um, um, and Ramsey asks, can we apply silver or gold gilding wax? Um, on the works. I also use silver. Um, I know it does look like white in the video, but I actually use silver. But you can, you know, um, do whatever color that you like. Uh, yeah, but usually when it comes to like a clear glass, I always go with silver just to make it look like, because um, it's more opaque and also um, it just, yeah, it just, it's just nicer with silver. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked where can I buy the glass for engraving? by the glass ornament. Um, so if you, once once you download as a PDF, you could click the link. Um, if you see underline, that that means it's a clickable link that takes you to where we got the ornaments and all the supplies. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to save it as PDF first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's linked in there. Yeah. It's a, um, a Etsy link, and then it'll yeah. take you to these ornaments. They're about like $5 and then you just pay for shipping. I actually bought the 10 pack because I wanted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pack for like $50. So I have yeah. a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah. these are the ornaments. Yeah, it's pretty easy to follow, right? You just have to uh, uh, trace it and engrave it and paint it. <laughs> and then put it up on your tree yeah. <laughs> or hang it up somewhere. Yeah. So, Give it to someone, gifts. Oh yes, Michaels. We actually don't have a Michaels here, so I have to buy everything oh. online, but they do sell it there. I, I've never seen a glass ornament at Michaels. Like this? Um, no, yeah, I, I've sent it, I've seen like the acrylic one, but not the glass one. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks guys. Yeah, so we will send it um, in the email. So after we get everything ready and finish editing this, we'll send you guys the replay, and we'll also send the work uh, the worksheet to begin with it. Yeah. Um. It, are they heavy to hang? I mean, it's glass. They're not light, but they're also not heavy. Yeah, you're gonna get an email from me. Um. By the way, for the replay and also where you get the handout and stuff like that um i think it's pretty light I yeah think. <laughs> um, it's not super heavy heavy um but also like you know when you hang it you want to make sure you hang it on the strongest branch right um <laughs> <drop. laughs> yes um, good to remember it's not a crystal it's just glass mm -hmm. um if you engrave in the acrylic ornament, which is the speed for the engraver, I would go with um, 7,000 um, RPM if you're using the acrylic one. Um, we didn't use acrylic because we wanted to kind of show how glass would look like. It just looks more nicer. <laughs> um, I like that. Yeah, you can definitely do it on acrylic. Um, probably doing exact same thing. And, um, and yeah, it's going to be on... 7,000 RPM instead. Mm -hmm. okay, um, Mana, Mana asked how long to wait for the acrylic paint to dry before you give it to customers. So when you're on site, just make sure you do like one layer. One layer would dry within five minutes. 
Um, in the video, I kind of like globbed on the paint. So that one took a little longer to dry, but if you're actually just using the brush, you can make a nice thin layer and it dries very quickly. The more layers you add, the longer it will take. So I do not recommend like globbing the paint on if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Someone asked, is there a significant difference between the yoke pillow and the ink nidus engraver? So me and Rosie actually uh, did a YouTube video um, on reviewing different drills. Uh, and we review like five different drills and one of them was the uh, Mestiza, which is exactly as the ink with this. Um, and you can watch that video and you can, you can decide yourself. So, um, and it is obviously an honest um, review on what we think, um, but I personally like the Yoke Fellow better. So yeah. <laughs> How long have I, used <laughs> yeah. new, I mean, okay. How long have I used the new engraving machine? Well, I've had it since September and have had no issue at all. Oh, Rosie sent the uh, YouTube video. Oh, so thanks, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. So you can click on it and um, you let us know. Do you press hard on the surface when engraving? No, I don't. I don't recommend to ever pressing hard or pressing anything. You should always let the drill do the job because mm -hmm. the thing is that when you press hard, it's harder for you to control one and two, you're going to get tired faster. Mm -hmm. um, so um, like hold firmly, but not like a death grip of the drill, but I would not press it hard because you might chip the glass as well. Uh, what size yeah. of birds does the yolk fellow engraver um yeah it's three thirty second inch which is actually the easiest um size of shang bird to find because that's the same as the male birds um so it's easier mm -hmm. finding um, I ask, um do the acrylic paints you keep in the case dry quickly how long can you keep it out that way um so with the paint box that i recommend it's in my um Amazon shop with the link in my bio. Um, that one, I keep it in there um, as long as you remember to close the top when it's not in use. It'll last for like days. It just depends. Like when I'm on site, sometimes I forget to close it for four hours and it's still fine. But like over the week time, especially depending on the climate, depending if you have like an AC blowing right down on you, it's going to dry out faster. But it's paint. It's not meant to last forever in there. So if it does, all you have to do is use that little spatula on the side of the box scrape it out and put more paint in there. So I don't you I don't fill up my case all the way up to the top because that's too much paint for me. I fill it up maybe halfway and then it still like sort of dries out before I can even use all of it. So you're not using a lot. Um, there's really no time limit. It just depends on like how you take care of it. And really like that actually holds a lot of paint. I, mm -hmm. I, I um, depending on how often that you um, do painting, like even when I do like 60 stuff, like I, it's still like enough, like I don't, I still don't have to refill it. So um, you don't have to refill it every single time for after events. So it, it's, it, it, it can really hold a lot. Oh yeah. I know Flo in Australia, she left hers open overnight, like straight open, just in the air. And she woke up the next morning and it was still fine. So it really just depends on where you are. If I did that here, it would probably dry up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do, oh wait, sorry, there's someone, when I tried engraving, my line looks kind of shaky. Do you know why that is? What you can do is you can go over it again. Um, just as long as you commit to that line. So it just, when you do it twice, then you kind of like, kind of get rid of that shakiness. So try that and see if that helps. Cause sometimes it does get a little shaky on certain, like, you know, when you're going different direction, what you probably want to do is you need to turn the, um, the ornament so then it's easier to go down than going up and then sideways so that might help too i learned that trick in your course you were yeah, really see, all these stuff are in my course guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see um, brand name and size of the burrs oh um i think the one that i link to is is jingling um mm -hmm. i think that's what it's called um Honestly, I don't think the brand matters to me as long as the size is correct, um, which is the sang size, the diameter, that works fine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Okay, um, let's see. Can the paints be activated with water if they dry like gouache? Um, I don't recommend doing that because once you add water, it takes forever to dry. These are acrylics, so they're not meant to be mixed with water. Um, it, when I was painting on canvas, you use a thinning medium, but that's for canvas only. For glass, you don't want to mix it with anything. If your paints are getting dried out, I would recommend throwing it out and getting new ones because then it'll alter the way it dries, it'll alter the way it looks on your bottle. Painting on glass is very tricky. It's one of the hardest surfaces to paint on because it's non-porous. So the paint has a hard time sticking to it already. So um, yeah, please do not mix it with water. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> no, don't do it. And the paints are like really inexpensive too. I think for the folk art, it's like one or $2 per bottle. So you can, you can probably afford like just an extra drop. <laughs> Let's see, is it hard to get the paint out of the case once it dries? It's so hard for me to scrape it out. So there's a little black, I was like, like just found out not too long ago that there's a little spatula on the side of your box. It's black, it's about like, it's just a little um, rectangle flat piece. You can use that to scrape it out and it gets like on the sides of the corner of the box. I didn't know that. I think it was only like one month ago that I found out. I was like, I was using Q-tips before that. No, not Q-tips. Um, <laughs> I was using a toothpick to try to scrape it out. And then I realized, I think it was June from uh, Texas. She was like, what is this for? I was like, you just unlock the secrets of the world with that. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah. Um, um, do you, how do you recommend to remove acrylic paints from the surface and what sort of sealant? Uh, you can remove it with alcohol and the sealants are the ones that I just used and it's also on the handout. Um, there are other ones like you can use Mod Podge if you don't have uh, that sort of the zero clear, but that's the only one that I've tried so far, the only two. Uh, Rancy is a Yoki fam. Yay! Do I have to charge it full before using it the first time? Uh, yes. So make sure you charge six hours straight before you use the first time. Even if it's like full, just charge for six hours. Yeah. Right when you open it, right? Yeah. Right when you open it, charge it for six hours. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the recommended from Jeremy, the owner of um, Yo Fellow. So I just kind of follow what he said. Uh, someone asked, could not wearing glass on while engraving lead to any kind of eye infection or something? I don't think you'll get eye infection, but your eyes will probably dry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I, I do recommend using uh, like goggles or any sort. They have cute ones. Yeah, the cute ones work too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Karen asks, is there a specific brush you recommend for acrylic paint? I really love anything that's um, like a nylon synthetic fibers because they're very soft and they glide really well onto the glass surface. Um, Daco is a good one if you want like detailed brushes, but I also recommend which one I've been using a lot is the um, Angeles acrylic paint brushes. Um, that one has different sizes. I think it's like $9 for the set. We'll include it with the, the email for you guys, some brush recommendations. Yeah. Um, when you remove the excess of wax filler, or it's actually called gilding wax, mm -hmm. on the engraved letters, do you use a cotton with alcohol or without, without alcohol? Um, I find it, you have to rush to remove it or it won't remove easily. Yeah, you actually do have to do it really, really quickly. That's why when I, um, what I recommend is not to use the cotton, cotton bud because that takes longer to do. Then you just kind of wipe it with the, with the cotton pad. Um, so then it's faster for you to do. Um, yeah, so, um, and if, it, if it's hard to remove, add more to activate the, uh, the dried, um, access because that somehow help it remove it. Do you use burr loop? Yes. So I always do, especially for glass. I don't use it for uh, metal, but I do use it for glass for sure. 
Um, I wish I knew about the Yoki before I got my engraver, but I know you always say it's good to have a, a backup. You definitely need to have a backup, especially if you're doing a live event, always mm -hmm. bring two. Don't bring one, always bring two. Because mm -hmm. like even with, with the, I wouldn't even bring the Yoki just one on its own. I always bring two. Um, when do you require to use the burr loop? Uh, when you're engraving, the burr loop is basically just to make sure that um, the your burr lasts longer and your line is much smoother. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Smooth lines. Yeah, that's what we <laughs> want. <laughs> Always. Oh. Okay. So, um, is there any more questions? What has been your worst experience with an engraver failure on site? Thankfully, it hasn't happened, but I've heard other people's stories. Um, I've heard that um, when, so what I like about the Yo Fellow is you're using three 30 second uh, thing, right? So I like using the long shaft burr. So it, it's not like the small, tiny dental burr, right? Because that dental burr, that means that you need a sleeve. What I've heard that happened to someone is that they lost the sleeve and that thing is tiny. Once you lose the sleeve, if you're using the dental burr, you can't use, you can't be, you basically cannot drill. So that's why I don't like to have that dependency on the uh, tiny little uh, um, dental burr. So I like to using a long one. So that, I think that happened to someone during the onsite. And watch the YouTube video with Rosie. Yeah, at just least. Really, literally, literally watch it and you see why we have recommendations. <laughs> um, so um, are the brushes in the handout? Um, it's not, they're not the specific ones that I'm using, um, but we will include it in there. It's the okay. DACO brand. Okay. Um, do we need to change the, change the burrow as soon as you can you can kind of know notice it um um I think I would say once you notice that the line isn't as nice anymore it's like the same thing as like a, a nib right so I would say for me if it's like glass obviously like it it dulls faster I think for me it was like maybe about after 15 words um right again depending on the kind cutting like to work a little harder as the bird and you feel um, it too like the lines get like feathery yeah, yeah. uh someone say my mistisa totally dropped at a live event before and it stopped working luckily i have oh. my oh so, saved so by the yogi <laughs> so here's the thing every single drill whether it's mistisa or same thing as the ink mides, the yoke fellow, any drill, the handpiece is the brain of the drill. So even if you drop pretty much whatever any brand, it might stop working. So you have to be very, very careful not to ever drop it. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. So I don't think it's a brand related, but it's it just it just more like it's good that you have two. Um, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, definitely be very, very, very careful about those. Um uh the handpiece because they're like the brain of the drill mm -hmm. um <clears throat> yeah. yeah so yeah me to me <laughs> which diameter of burrs do you highly use it really depending i i usually use one millimeter or two millimeter depending on the type of the size of engraving that i'm uh doing so it really depends um so depending on the size of the project. Um, so all of that, everything, if you guys have want more information of all the uh, engraving tools, I do have a preview on uh, my engraving course. Um, uh, it was still showing my Mistisa because this was recorded a year earlier in the year, but everything else about the bird, the burr loop, whatever, it's all there. Um, it also has a handout. Um, where you get access to, um, you know, like the anatomy of the drill and everything. So you can just go there. Um, speaking of which, um, if you are interested in learning more about bottle painting and engraving, Michelle and I have courses for that. So 
Uh, Michelle, do you want to talk about your course? Yes. Okay. So my course is based for the calligrapher and the engraver. So it really teaches you another niche so that you can offer it to your clients. And also this is highly related to what we do already. So it kind of ties in all together. Most of our live events, we do engraving. Um, and then, you know, we have brands who ask you if you can also paint. So it really just goes hand in hand with each other. So I break it down for people who have no experience in even holding a paintbrush, I show you how to hold it correctly. We go through all the paints together, the sealers. Um, we even start off with some um, one swipe or one layer painting techniques so that you be equipped to paint very quickly on site. So the goal of my course is to have you painting within five to 10 minutes for your on-site events. And then this can also be translated to like in-studio projects. You can also use it for that too. So we go over the scary things like composition. I know that's kind of hard to think about like where the flower placement is. Um, and then we'll go into like timing ourselves for live events. Um, another cool thing is every month I do a painting party for my students, where if um, you're one of our members, I allow you to come in and I'll teach you a different flower every single month because it's always learning. And this is, I highly want to stress that even with my course, with Talisa's course, both are lifetime access. And um, we have our uh, community groups because learning is forever, right? It's not just for a certain time. We always want to keep you guys updated. So you get that from the both of us. Um, I also have a business side in my course too, where I show you like how to do things on site, how to go out and pitch yourself. Um, we even have a temp email template from Erin from Nilsson Letter. She wrote it just for the FVP students so that you can go and send like snazzy emails to all of your clients. <laughs> And um, yeah, because this goes hand in hand with engraving, uh, Talisa and I have partnered to do all of this. And I'm also a student of Talisa's course. I have learned so much. Um, Talisa, do you want to talk a little bit about like what's in your course as well? Yeah, of course. So I do talk about the tools. Um, that part is actually you can also have access for free. Um, but um, now, and also if you, you know, want to learn, the, there are so many things that you can engrave. You can engrave glass, plastic, coated metal, metal, jewelry, stone, and whatnot. Basically, everything that you're going to be asked to engrave um, as a calligrapher, everything is there. So you can always go back to it. It's a lifetime access. Um, I noticed that's what my students do. Like, they don't have the project yet. They're going to look at it later. And it's totally fine. Um, and um, so there is different surfaces and there's also composition of where brands usually want you to engrave. Everything is based on my experience as a live event engraver. Um, and because I am, I do get a lot of these a lot. So um, everything, what I've learned, what I've done is all in there. And there's also stuff about like how to do floral engraving, illustration engraving. Um, because those things you will be asked to do. Um, and, and then again, of course, about the marketing part, how to market yourself, um, the business side of it, um, and um, what to do when you, you know, start getting inquiries, right? Um, and then the live event stuff, um, all in there. And there's a bonus on pyrography. So you learn how to do rose burning as well as foiling, because again, as an engraver, you will be asked to do those. Um, and, um, and I absolutely have done uh, um, multiple live events for those. So, um, and of course the discord, like it's, uh, I mean, it's not everything. Obviously I, we try to include everything in our courses but there are obviously things that are like we learn later on and we talk about that in our, um, in the discord. Like we spell, we spill so much tea in our, um, um, in our discourse, so it's much. very, very knowledgeable. Like we, we said, and then everyone, and you can ask any questions pretty much anytime one of us will be answering it. So, um, so it's, um, it's a, that's why we wanted to have um, a full, a lifetime access because we will be updating stuff too. I, Michelle and I are going to be updating stuff in 2023, um, mm -hmm. which is why we're going to increase price um in 2023 because we feel that we you know we have things that we want to update and um if and we also have the cross uh discount program 
So basically the way it works is if you sign up for my course, you get 15% off uh, to get um, the bottle painting course for Michelle and vice versa. If you're buying Michelle's course, you can get 50% off to buy my course because our, you know, our skills are just so, it's like sister niches. If you start doing bottle painting, you're probably going to be asked to be engraving. Mm -hmm. Same thing. If you're engraving, you're probably going to be asked to do bottle painting. It's, it's what the brands want nowadays. So, um, yeah, sister niches. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So hopefully you'll join our courses soon because we are increasing our price next year. I know. Next year. Yeah. Why not? Um, you said you bought your courses. Would I still be able to use it? Yes. So if you go to the last module, you're going to find the code there. The, um, the discount is there forever. If you're already in my course, you can get Michelle's uh, code. It's, it's just in the module. So how skilled do you have to be as a calligrapher? Um, as long as you know how to do calligraphy in terms of like, you know, how to uh, form a sentence form uh, without looking at, you know, at the instructions and whatnot, then it's fine. Because I think this is what I feel like to me. Um, calligraphy is an ongoing learning process. I'm still taking calligraphy courses, even if I'm a seasoned calligrapher. You all, there's always different styles to learn. There's Spencerian, there's like Madras, Copper Plate. Um, it's an ongoing learning. So whatever, um, whatever skill you're at at calligraphy, I still highly recommend that you keep t uh, taking, you know, calligraphy courses. But the engraving is more about like, how you apply to make sure that your line is smooth and like, you know, you're at the right RPM and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Even for me too, I was engraving since um, December of last year. And then I just joined Lisa's course like two months ago. And I still learned a lot of new things like little tricks and tips because Lisa has been engraving on site forever. And she picks up all these new things that she shares with us in the group. So even if you know a little bit already, you'll definitely yeah. learn. Yeah, even if you only know, um, uh, I actually have a student who does not know how to do English calligraphy, but she's an Arabic calligrapher. So she took engraving cords and now she's doing it. So like literally as long as whatever kind of calligraphy that you've done, <laughs> you can apply it to um, engraving. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Let's see. modern calligraphy is welcome too. So like pretty much everything. everything. Yeah. Even drawing flowers, illustrations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Ramsey asks, what if you already have the bottle painting course? Um, if you have it already, if you're in if, if you're in the course, then you can use, um, if you go to the last module, you'll find the discount for 15% off to Lisa's course. Yeah, just look in that module, you'll find yeah. it. <laughs> and then use it at checkout. Yeah, use it. <laughs> Um, just asked if I already bought your course, would I be able to use the discount for the painting course? Yeah, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, same thing. It's vice versa. Mm -hmm. Any um, free resources to learn calligraphy? Um, I don't teach calligraphy, but I'm sure you'll find a lot of resources there on YouTube and whatnot. Um, but I do highly recommend that you learn um, the classic type, like the copper plate and all that, because once mm -hmm. you learn those, um, it just looks better on the engraving. Um, again, it's an, it's an ongoing journey when it comes to learning calligraphy. So I always highly recommend always learning from different teachers even. Yeah. With everything, right? You know, engraving, painting, it's always learning. Exactly. Uh, okay. Right. I think Thank you. Um, we've covered pretty much everything um thank you so much for so many of you that showed up tonight um we are going to end the workshop now and we're going to edit and we're going to send um the links and everything um later today um, tonight in a couple of hours depending on how long it takes to edit um <laughs> but it has to be tonight because we both i think we yeah. both have events tomorrow so i know um, yeah <laughs> So we'll see you then and happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you again. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>